And the, the chief of the British Army has warned Brits that they could be called up to fight for the king and country in the event of war with Russia. General Patrick Sanders today called on the British authorities to mobilise the nation, stressing the need for a shift in the minds of the public to be mentally prepared for a military conflict. Well, joining us now to discuss this and more is defence and military analyst Colonel Simon Diggins. Now, Simon, it, you know, it, just a few months ago, the idea that we could all have to roll up our sleeves, pick up a weapon and fight for the nation would have seemed for the birds. And yet we've had similar warnings in Sweden from their foreign minister, indeed from within NATO, to itself. Uh, now, we've heard that we Brits might have to be prepared to fight a war of attrition and not just sort of grey zone warfare. Uh, is this just a call to arms, so to speak, because the armed forces are massively ill-equipped and it's a warning sign? Or do you think we really do have to prepare ourselves for some sort of conflict in the next decade or so? I think both things are absolutely correct. Firstly, that for a while now, there's been voices raised showing real concern over our lack of preparedness, our lack of resilience, and most recently, uh, over really very abysmal recruiting and retention figures. I mean, the government's plan is to have us reduced formally by 2025 to 72,000 soldiers in, in the field. Now, that's well below the lowest figure we've ever been since the Napoleonic Wars. But the sad reality of that is, as our current recruiting retention figures continue, we're actually going to be about 70,000. So we're going to be below even that abysmally low figure. And that trend's been the case for nearly 10 years. So there's a real issue now about that, plus a recognition that we live in a very dangerous world. And I think the warnings from the Swedish uh, prime minister, who is also the Estonian prime minister, that actually within three to five years, Russia could be in a place where they could do as real harm uh, is absolutely uh, there. You know, we need to get to a place now where, where, in a way, it hasn't existed for a generation. Defence, defence spending and how we organise our armed forces has actually got to become a national issue. It's been very largely ignored by both political parties now for nearly 30 years. Yeah. Um, uh, Sir, Sir Patrick Sanders, Chief of General Staff at the Army, the Army Chief, uh, he says we're at our 1937 moment, which is really chilling. Uh, people will make jokes that I was there, but uh, I do know that in 1937, most people in Britain didn't really think it would actually happen. 1939 all-out world war. Uh, is Sir Patrick Sanders right? Are we at our 1937 moment? Is the prospect of all-out global war real and imminent? I think it's always a possibility. We've, we've been looking at, over the last few weeks, the possibility of a regional escalation in the Middle East as a result of the Israel-Hamas fighting uh, and the way it's spread from there, and that's always a possibility. There's also what we're dealing with with Russia. It's a country that's not entirely behaving in a completely rational fashion. You have Putin and you have people around Putin who are not just kind of old-fashioned Russian imperialists, but they seem to have a sort of a messianic belief that Russia has a divine right to rule vast swathes of Eastern Europe. You know, do they see this? They, they call it their civilizational mission. You know, they've got this kind of belief inside them that that's there. When you're dealing with people like that, you need to have the forces and the resilience to oppose them. And that's more than just having a shot window of some good soldiers, great people, uh, and, and the bare minimum to get us through a, a minor counterinsurgency somewhere. We're looking at a different scale of warfare, and that threat exists. Putin, post-Ukraine, might well try and try something in, in the Baltics. We need to be prepared for that. Well, I mean, is it a good idea, then, that Erdogan has now agreed to let Sweden join NATO? NATO is expanding. Uh, the areas in which Putin could dip his toe in and find there has to be some sort of retribution has suddenly got a lot larger. It has, and we, we hope that Finland will join as well. Um, but Putin, again, so we, we're doing it, so we're not dealing with a completely rational actor. He will look at that and see, well, can I test them? Yeah, are, are we really, are we really going to say that Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, uh, the Sawaki Gap, which is the gap between Lithuania and Poland, yeah, are, if you like, are worth the bones of a British Grenadier? That old line from uh, from Bismarck in, in in looking back to that issue. Yeah, and we need to make sure that he understands that our front line of defence are those NATO countries, that we are real about what we're going to say and we will defend them. And we need to have something more to say than the shot window. We have very little depth, we have almost no resilience, and faced with that, he will think, maybe I can take a chance on that. We need to make sure he understands that if he does decide to take a chance on that, he will lose, and that needs more than we've got at the moment. I mean, I don't like calling for the government to spend lots of our tax pounds, uh, but uh, our armed forces are so denuded 
You know, there's 73,000 of them. Wouldn't even fill a football ground to defend a nation of 68 million people. Does not the government have to invest pretty speedily uh, in recruiting more people to defend this country, more armed forces? We've got to do something, haven't we? Totally, to totally agree with you. The, the figures we're talking about, you know, we're, they, we're hovering around 2.1, 2.2% of our, of our GDP. Rishi Sunak talks about um, spending 2.5% when circumstances permit. Well, by that basis, circumstances are never going to permit. For sensible defence economic analysts, so we need to be spending about a minimum of 3% of our GDP uh, on, on defence. You know, and here's the call. You know, let's have 3% 3, 3 now. That's the figure we need. That needs to be sustained for a significant number of years in order to get us something up to the same place of work. I'll give you one comparison here, if I may, which is what Russia is now spending. Now, they're in the middle of a war, but they're currently spending about 6% of their GDP on defence, or one-third of all their government expenditure. That's the threat. That's the opposition. That's what they're doing now, and they will keep going. That's why we need to up our game massively. It's Colonel Simon Diggins. Uh, excellent to talk to you, as always. Thank you so much for your time.